This is Comet Picks by the Glick. Hey, and I'm your host, Jason Glick. How are you doing, Jason Glick? I'm doing fine, John. How about you? Uh, not too bad. Uh, what do you got for us tonight? Uh, tonight? Well, tonight I have nothing nothing more for you guys than a superior podcast. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, superior. Yes. A- a- instead of inferior? <laughs> yes, as opposed to the, to the inferior ones I've been giving you for all these years. No, I finally decided to give you a superior one. Superior one just like Spider-Man. Because it's like I just, cause thanks to Marvel um, like offering up this, um, this nice little hardcover, I figured you know, now is the perfect time to jump on to Superior Spider-Man bandwagon and see what, see what all the fuss and controversy is about. Now, those of you um, who... Like who who haven't been um, paying attention to like Spider Man status quo in the Marvel universe? Well, you know I, I can kind of kind of understand because you know Spider Man is you know like he's he's a formula. He's like the hard luck superhero, and there's very little about him that changes over over the years. But but now but then um it's the series um, regular writer Dan Slott who's been writing Spider Man um solo for for several years now, but also spearheaded the whole brand new day. Um, initiative several, even further back, he's taken Spider-Man in a um, in a in a strange and different different direction. That's you know kind of like, that's kind of like freaked everyone out. But at the same time, though, it's like you know it's you can't get freaked out about this because you know like as dramatic as changes they make to Spider-Man, you know that eventually it's all going to you know eventually re- revert to like the status quo. You know Peter Peter's going to come back. It's like things like like things are going to be things are going to be just as you liked it for. For a while, and then then they'll start thinking about. Oh, then Marvel will start going. Okay, how are we going to re- reinvent the wheel again? So, but right now my money's on just waiting for, like, on Peter being back as Spider Man. It's like in the uh, in time for the in time for the new movie on um, next May because you know Marvel likes tying in tying these things into their to their film film deals even if no one actually goes out to read the comics as a result of seeing the movies. But I digress. Anyway, you know. You know, like, to talk about Superior Spider-Man, it's basically like I'm um, delving into spoiler into a spoiler warning in itself because because like the whole the whole concept is just one one giant spo- one giant spoiler because the idea is well let me back up for a bit. Let me talk about the um like I said I picked up the hardcover which collects um two volumes. One is um Amazing Spider-Man Dying Wish which collects issues um 698 through 700. And the first five issues of Superior Spider-Man. Now, on one hand, it's like the um, dying wish is is essential to understanding the whole, it's like the, like the whole premise of this of this endeavor. And it starts off on a really, it's like on a on a really clever note in the sense that you know it's just it's, you know Spider-Man going through a day in the life, day in life, saying it's going to be the he he's found a newfound sense of optimism. Um, like he, like today's gonna be the best day ever. It's like he's go, he takes off, takes on a fake superhero, meets up with Mary, Mary Jane, goes off to work. It's like and um, it's like and also gets um, help, um, takes part in his in in um, his physical therapy. All while Doctor Octopus is is finally um, gaining consciousness in the raft, and is like calling out for Peter Parker after after all these months. And so Peter goes, so Peter goes to pay his foe. Pay, pay his whole last respects, only to reveal that 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 Octopus isn't calling out Peter Parker because he knows his foe's secret identity. He's calling out Peter Parker because he is Peter Parker. Doctor Octopus has gone and pulled that whole that whole um, mind body switcheroo, and now he he's in Spider Man's body, and um, Peter Parker is in Doctor Octopus's body. So I'm dying away with only hour, hours left to live. Now reread now you read this um this issue this issue this issue from like in, like the first time it's and it, like it's it's beautiful like there's really there's nothing going wrong I mean it's like I read this and I was think, I was constantly it's like I and I was constantly um you know expecting like you know when's when's he gonna, when's Doc when's Doc Ock gonna pull that pull the pull the switch oh he already has and rereading it again it reads even better because nothing because because knowing that um, this is Doctor Octopus you're seeing right here, it's like it still reads. It still reads exactly the same. It's a beautiful piece of work that I've completely spoiled for everyone um, by giving by by telling you about this. But it's necessary because it's it's actually because it's core of the premise of this series. But kudos to Dan Slott because it's a brilliant because it's a brilliant kickoff to the to the arc, which basically has um which th- which then ratchets up in intensity as 
as um because well as um well like Doctor Octopus now has access to all of Peter Parker's memories, Peter has access to all of Doctor Octopus's. So that includes his um super criminal breakout procedures. So he gets um Hydro Man, the Trapster, and the Scorpion to break him out of out of the raft, and then um and Doctor Octopus is all is trying to figure out you know okay I'm gonna it's like yo it's like what am I gonna do here oh I'm gonna put all, make sure all my all the, all my friends and family are safe and um then and then I'm gonna go go on a flight to Belgium where I wait. I will spend 15 hours in the air. By the time I touch down, um, doc, um, my old body will be dead, and so will Peter Parker. Then, um, but however, after a bit of um, J. Jonah Jameson's um, boasting about how um, how Doctor Octopus has never been, never amounted to nothing in his life, he decides to um, make the final stand and take take Peter on, like on um, face to face. Now, in that now in this fi- in this final battle. Um, Peter was was going to try and swap the memories his memories back, but because you know it's like we're dealing with a series called Superior Spider-Man now, it's like it doesn't work. In fact, all it does is wind up giving um giving Otto a front row seat to all the defining moments in Peter in Peter's life. And just as Peter bites it, uh, Otto look realizes you know like what he has to do now. Like he like he's not going to just like use his use use um like on um, Peter's Peter's bot, body and superpowers. To, for his own ends, no, he's going to use them to be a better, superior Spider-Man than the than, than the Marvel Universe has gotten to date. So, this takes us to the series, to the Superior Spider-Man series proper, and so far, um, Slot has actually, uh, Slot has actually pulled off a pretty entertaining take on having the villain assume assume the hero's role. It's not perfect; it requires a certain it requires a large amount of suspension of disbelief on one particular um, part here, but um, but overall, it's like it's it's been fun because um, Otto is is actually um, sincere about be, being a better Spider-Man. I mean, yes, he's it's like he's pra- he's pragmatic, s- self-censored, and um, it's like and clearly and and, it, and a lot of this is done like you know out of out of self-glorification rather than a genuine desire. To, like, to help his his um, fellow man, but at the same time, there's there's no doubt that he that uh, Otto has come up with a lot of good ha- come up with a lot of good ideas for um for making a, making um New York a better safer place. This includes okay, let's see. This includes like um put, putting out hundreds of spider bots in order to um patrol this patrol the city so that whenever he sees something suspicious, hey, it's just on his iPad. He's got his own spider, spider bot um, control pad for his iPad, because you know, I guess he's got his um, he, I guess Peter's like cool, and, or Otto's um, enough of a maverick that he wants his, I, his iPad jailbroken, I guess. Anyway, that, that there's, but there's that, there's alerting the uh, alerting the authorities in time to, like, to have, them, have them deal with the minor with the minor thing, with, with minor things, like fought it's like like fires and purse snatchings. While well, he takes on the bigger things, like when the Superior Six break into Horizon Labs, and he calls in the media for a um, so they can um, witness his his throwdown as he beats as as he stops them as they're trying to attain a tech to steal a weather satellite. Now, just as he's um, trying, now he doesn't have Peter's sense of sense of restraint. So as he's like you know, wailing on on one of their members, like he's saying, "I'm going to be." I'm going to be the superior Spider-Man here. Nope. Not going to happen because then Peter turns out that his that that his that the Peter Parker we know we know and love is still in the body some somewhere just just try I'm um, just try, try and find a way to hold hold under control and eventually retake retake his body. Well, that's that's part of the plan. It's fun and it's a lot of fun seeing um Peter just, you know, um, completely wig out of what Otto's doing, and even just like you know, grudgingly admit, yeah, you know, some of this stuff is actually pretty good. Such as when um, Otto's um, um, uh, it's like, like um, plans for patrolling the city actually given given enough spare time to attend to Aunt May's um, physical physical rehabilitation. Just little, just you know, little clever things like that. But um, yeah, but it's, but yeah, it's it's a lot of the, but a lot of the people of the story. This the whole whole um, Superior Spider-Man story basically stems from from the fact that that like a lot of the expectations from the uh, from, like the hero the villain assuming the uh, like the hero's role it's like are actually are actually gen- genuinely subverted here in the sense that you know Otto is like I said he is making a genuine effort and in a lot of ways he's actually doing he's actually doing a better job 
at being Spider-Man, then it's like then, then well, he's doing a better job at um, making the city free of crime than Spider-Man was. Is he being a better Spider-Man? Well, that's that's really up for debate because one of the things that um, you, you that that I mean, it, I mean, like you know that all superhero stories require a certain amount of suspension of disbelief, but Superior Spider-Man also requires a rather large amount of. Um, suspension of disbelief in regards to Peter's character, because we all know how how Peter Parker s- sounds, like his like his constant quips, one-liners, and and um his and dialogue patterns. Now, and of course, like you know, Doc Ock has his own patterns as well. These patterns have not been changed at all to the point where you know Doc's the Doc's dialogue, you know, it sounds you know just like he hasn't changed it at all. It just sounds just like him, and it's jarring co- co- coming from like Peter Parker's mouth. I mean, when I'm reading the uh, the text here, I I don't hear whenever I see um like Peter's uh, whenever I see Peter's dialogue, I don't hear it in Peter's voice. I hear it in Doc Ock's voice because that's exactly how he sounds right here. And that's and that's just a little um th- that's 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 more annoying than it, it's not only is it annoying, but it's also like, you know, how has no one picked up on this? I mean, yes, there is some hand waving here going on now how how like like bits here I was just like you know some some villains ask him hey you know Spider Man what happened to the one liners all like well maybe I wised up and realized that this is that um like that I'm fighting super villains is no longer a joke it's like or that some of the cops saying yeah you know I'm, I like it better when Spider Man was funny you know it's like but you know that's one thing but when um the Avengers you know look at, look at him and go well okay okay yes we um yeah I mean like. They, one of the um, big things in, in, at the start of Volume Two is is the Avengers like looking at Spider Man, realizing that he's clearly acting out of character, and then um, it's like and then bringing him in, and then Spider Man just like you know going it's like no, you're not going to examine my brain, and then they um, they take him down, and it's like and like you know Peter like Peter's ghost is like cheering out all this, and then when the results come back and Captain America goes yes, well we've examined you from head to toe, and we realize. You're not a scroll. It's like you know any kind of shape shifting alien or or life form that we're aware of. And you know, even though it's like you know Spider Man's like you know speaks completely differently, he's taken to killing some of his foes, and it's it's like it, it's like it's it's one of those it's it's one of those like you know what what are you what are you people thinking about? It's like it's it's like it, it's. It, it defy it, it defies defies the logic of the story, and it's really. It's like, and it's, it's like, and it's really jarring for the most part. I mean, like I said, if you can get, if you can get past this part, and I realize that that's, that probably is, that probably is asking a lot, but, I, but if you do, it's like, it's, like I said, it's still a, like Superior Spider-Man has still been a pretty entertaining take on the, it's like on the hero as, it's like as, vil, as villain story. It's like, in fact, I do kind of, I really wish that Slot had um, taken, taken more thought into like into making like you know um like like uh, like um Doctor Octopus like you know acting as the challenges that that um Doctor Octopus would um have to act as Spider Man you know just just um seeing him try to crack wise and fail and um and also but because he because he does do a good job getting his other um dealing with his other the other aspects of it, of his character like in, inheriting on Parker's terrible terrible luck including when he finds out that you know that Peter's no, not actually a doctor. Peter was actually one credit short of getting his doctorate, so now he's going back to going back to school and trying to get um, his get his doctorate, and also meeting a nice nice little nice little short person as his tutor, and like start and striking up a nice relationship as well. While at the same time realizing that you know, hey, like I'm never going to get anywhere with Mary Jane. And if I really wanted to, I've got all Peter's memories here, or at least I at least he does up until a certain point in the arc. So. So overall, it's like, oh, also the um the art the art so the art in the series is uh, is um gen- has generally been um quite quite good with with most of the art I'm um, being prov- in between the two the hardcover and the uh, it's like and volume two um in paperback being provided by um Humberto Ramos who's who's got a great cartoonist style that that has lots of energy and is and is perfect for um conveying yet like. The craziness of Spider- Spider-Man's world. It's one of those cases. I, w- I would say it's. I would say it's one of those cases where, where I wish he could have done the entire volume, entire series. But 
the same time, he's also we've also got great contributions from from Giuseppe Camaconi, who um, who does two, who also has a um, like a, a, a distinctive um, cartoonist style. One again, one with lots of energy, with lots of energy and pizzazz, and also um, Ryan Stegman, who um, he's got a more conventional um, super, like um, like detailed superhero art art style to him that would. That works pretty well. Like it's conveying this conveys the seriousness like of the whole endeavor. But even though you can see he's trying to bring like like a lighthearted sense of fun, his st- his style screams um, you know more. This is like this is a this can, this is kind of a serious story than anything else. So so overall, like the art, like I said, the art's not perfect, but overall it's bit like there's more good in here than than bad. And um, as far as things goes, you know, I've there, there is word that you know like. That things might be wrapping up um, by the end end of the year because there's been some promos with um, running for the um, New York Comic Con with um, Slot talking about the end, but um, you know it's like that. That's it. That's par for the course. I mean, like yes, it was like putting this whole switcheroo was dramatic, but at the same time, you know, we've gone through like crazier stuff. I mean, anyone who remembers the Clone Saga from the '90s. Um, knows what I'm talking about, but at the same time, you know, even then, you know, Spider-Man, like eventually, event- P. Parker was eventually um Spider-Man again, and it's like, and things went, and things came came full circle. It's like those of you who are still um acting butthurt about all this, you know, hey, you know, it's going, it's, it's like so things are going to revert, uh, revert again, and all I can see is like enjoy the ride while it while it lasts. Yeah, like I said, it's. It's a fun, like it's a fun take on a, on a very familiar superhero trope. So long as you can get past the fact that you know, no, that um, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, dumbness um, required on the part on the part of the um, general general cast to accept that you know this this Peter Parker is the same one they've known for for years and years and years. So John, like any particular thoughts on all this rambling? Well, um. Just one, really, and one that has been kind of bugging me for a while. It's like, so let me get this straight. They've already produced many, many issues of this, and it's still Doc Ock. <laughs> yeah. So well, I mean, it's like it's the, sweet. Oh, the thing is, yeah, the thing is about the schedule for us for Spider Man is that um they've instead of like doing like multiple Spider Man series, like well they've they they've done like just you know Spider Man as like as like a um twice twice or thrice week twice or thrice monthly um, series, and that's how it's been running for Superior Spider-Man. So even though, it's like, like I said, this, this, whole, this, this whole particular art storyline has only been going since January, it's, um, like, we're, we're up to, ish, we're almost up to, we're up to issue, like, um, 18 or 19 right now in the in the real world. So, I mean, like, up to, um, volume volume two, um, which collects up to issue 10, just, just came out about, like, a, about two weeks ago. So and then um, the next one's going to be coming out in another couple couple weeks as well. And there's like there's also the hardcover which I got, which collects um, the Dying Wish, on um, the storyline which sets up the whole story. As well as the first five issues of the regular series. Hmm. All right. Well, cool. Um, I mean, hey, what a great twist. Yeah, like I say, it's it's. It, like I say, every, everyone was like complete, was completely um like wondering, whoa, Sp- like Doc Ock Spider Man now, what? No man, it's like. <laughs> Like I said, there's there's massive internet outrage when it happened, sure. and e- yeah, even like um, Stan Lee said, "Wow, it's like great Christmas gift, Marvel." It's like everyone gets presents. <laughs> I get a dead Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> now that's great. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Um, yeah, but if I but if I was willing to bet anything, it's like Stan Lee looked at this and go, "Eh, you know, he'll be back." He'll be, back, he'll be back as Peter Parker in a year. Of course. Of course. <laughs> you know, hey, let's let these things run. Anyway, do you know what you're going to talk about next time? Oh, it's like nothing definite, but I think I'm doing a, probably doing an author, an author spotlight for next time. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, until then, uh, we'll catch you on Comic Picks by the Glick. All right. Laters, everyone. All right. Night. <laughs>